What's going on? Let's talk about making Stems and Logic Pro X. 10.5 is what I'm using. Let's do it the easy way. So first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go to the desktop. We're going to I'm going to lock into Logic here. Okay, now I'm in a session. I got my stuff going. First step you're going to want to make is if you have any limiting on your master bus, don't turn it off. A lot of people are like, turn off the limiting, bro. You know, that's what you got to do. Turn off all your master bus stuff. No, don't do that because you may have a sound that you've glued together, right? So what I would do is any limiting that you do have, like say this was limited like this, I would bring up the threshold. I would just bring it up to, you know, just like doing very, 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 very light limiting, if any. So 0.4, and then same thing here. I have a limiter here. I would just bring the threshold up, right? So 0 0.4, 0 0.5, good, right? So now I still got the sound, but I'm not getting the limiting, which if you make all the stems, they're going to have a compounding effect, right? So if you are going through a limiter and they're all going through a limiter, but then you make stems and they're all being limited separately, then you're going to get a really bad gain staging problem. So that's number one. Check your limiter on your actual master bus if you have any processing there. And just make sure that you're giving yourself some headroom. Just bring the threshold up. Very simple. Now step two, highlight all the tracks. Okay, just grab them all. Now hopefully they're labeled really well because this step will need that. Now the next step is you go to file and you go to export. And then you go to 70 tracks as audio files, okay? Very important that you see that 70 tracks as audio files. Very important. Okay, so I'm going to export that. I'm going to come to my... If you already have like a session folder, this session folder I can make... Um, in the bounces folder, I can make a, um, a new folder called stems. And then I would label it what the track is labeled. And this track is called heartless, okay? So now I have a stems-heartless folder to put these stems in. Now, very important, you have a cycle range that goes from bar one, beat one, okay? All the way to the end with some ring out. So if you have any reverbs or a hit, hit at the end or anything like that, you wanna capture that stuff, okay? Good to know. And then now on the range, you're gonna select export cycle range only. You're gonna keep this as wave. If it's not already selected, you're gonna go here, keep it at 24 bit. Depending on what your session was at, I would keep it at what your session's at. Whatever you recorded at is good. But 24 bit is preferable. It's pretty uh, normal for mixing, mastering engineers. Okay, and this is usually for mixing when you're making stems this deep. So I'm stemming every single individual element. Okay, next thing, bypass effects plugin. Uh, you can do that if you um, have like a bunch of reverbs and delays and all sorts of stuff on your tracks. I would highly recommend bypassing the effects plugins, which actually also bypasses this whole master chain. So that's okay. We're just going to make dry stems in this case. Um, and that's what, if your mixing engineer asks you for dry stems, that's what you would do. Okay. Another thing is if you have like a dance track where you've done a lot of volume pan automation and you've worked your ass off to get those things done, include that as well. Otherwise, leave it alone, right? And then here, very important on the normalize, just keep that off. If you normalize, it's basically going to bring the volume up and it's going to cause you gain staging problems, which is really bad because if you have your mix and balance in a certain sense and then you make your stems, your stems should drop in as zero for the mixing engineer and already make some sort of sense. If you turn norm normalize on, then all of a sudden all the stems get gained up to like, you know, point uh, you know, 0.1, you know, 0.5, whatever, some sort of headroom where everything's at the same level, right? It just finds the um, the peak and it finds the RMS and it, and it averages out. All normalizing is different, but just turn it off. Trust me, it's going to change the game for you. If you, uh, if you start going, I'm going to turn it on, you're going to have a lot of headaches. All right. Now, next thing is your track name and custom. So I like to have my track name here. You'll see the file name example down at the bottom here. And it says lead vox dash. And then what I do with the custom is I put the uh, name of the song. So this is called Heartless. So now I have lead vox dash Heartless, okay? So in the custom, you actually have to put the dash in there. Just remember that. Now, when I export, I'm going to get all my stems done in one pass, which is incredible. It's gonna save you a lot of time. It's efficient, it's effective. It's the simple way to make stems. Now let's talk about way number two. Now let's say I'm just gonna cancel this export. I can hit command period, and that's going to cancel an export on any bounce. So it's a little tip for you. Now the next thing is, what if I want to get dry stems, but I also want to keep my, my processing on the master bus, right? Because it's giving me glue and it's giving me my sound. 
what I would end up doing is I would go to the mixer and I would find any like reverbs, delays, anything that's going to make something wet, right? Not like parallel compressors or anything like that, but anything that's going to be wet. So um, I'm going here and like see what kind of stuff I got going on. So here I have a compressor, I got a compressor, but here I have a verb, right? So here's a Valhalla verb. And all I would do here is I would just turn off the send, uh, the return for the reverb. So just mute that track. And also, even if you wanted to, you can make tracks for all of these. You can go highlight all of them and you can say create track. Now in the main area, you'll see all of these tracks. And when you go to export, hopefully you're following along with this, this is very important. But now I have these tracks, I have the parallel comps and maybe I have some delays, things like that. Now they're out on the main arrange window. What I can do is I can decide which ones I want to export. So when I go and I select all the tracks, I can deselect by holding down command and clicking the track title, right? I can deselect the reverb. So now I'm not exporting the reverb. And if, of course, like I also do reverb and delay set uh, um, inserts, right? So I insert them directly on my tracks. So just go skim through your thing and go, okay, I got a Valhalla verb here. Turn it off. Bam, turn that off. Like all you got to do is just, I have all the tracks selected, so that's not really working. But, you know, make sure you're not all selected. And then basically just turn off all your reverbs and your delays. Anything that's doing, you know, time-based stuff um, in the time-based realm, just turn them off. So just go through here, turn everything off that's got a reverb or delay or is wet, right? So here's another one. Here's a bus. I got a Valhalla verb. All I can do, all I got to do is just mute that one. And then I can also just, just to make sure, make a track, but I think that's the same one already. But you can just turn it off as well as a double safety, right? So just go and turn off all your time-based processing, anything that's wet, right? And there you go. And then you can now do the same thing. You can just select all the tracks, right? Deselect the, the verbs. I'm just deselecting the, the reverbs. It could be delays. It could be anything that's gonna be wet, right? So now I got my master bus processing, but I also have deselected all the wet stuff. So if a engineer asked me for the dry stems, but with my compressors and my EQs and my settings already, then I can do that. Now these, these are actually considered wet stems still, right? Because they have processing on them. They might have choruses, flangers, doublers, um, EQs, compressors, etc. So it's still wet. And um, as an engineer, I would prefer the very, very dry stems. Turn off all your stuff. I want the driest stems you could possibly do, right? But if your engineer does want like a little bit pre-chewed stems, this is what you can do. Now you can do the same steps. Go to File, go to Export, and then you're going to go to 75 tracks as audio files. Very important. And then same thing, track name, custom, all that, export cycle range, wave. The only thing we're going to change here, very important, is we're going to turn off bypass effects plugins because now we're bouncing with the effects plugins, but remember we turned off all of the time-based processing. Okay, so any reverbs, delays, etc., we muted or we're not exporting with this. Now I can export this and I'm going to have somewhat wet uh, stems. Now, last thing I wanna share with you guys um, is when you do send in stems for a mix, it is very, very, very important that you leave everything how it is and you provide your mixing engineer, your mastering engineer, especially here at Radium, like I, we have to have this because it's a clue into what you're doing as an artist or what you're wanting as a producer or whatever you've already worked for, but make a bounce exactly where it is, okay? So you already have all your processing on, everything's here, you got your mastering, all that stuff that you've worked really hard for, and you're like, I just can't get it there. Like, I haven't been mixing and mastering for 20 years like you have, Bradley, you, you dickhead, you know? Uh, <laughs> that's all you got to do you just leave everything how it is and you bounce it and this is what we want we want a an mp3 is fine but a wave even better right in the session uh 24 bit 44 one whatever you record it in make sure normalizes off hit okay make that bounce and call it like reference mix or my mix dash heartless you know whatever the song title is so include that with the stems and what i like to do in the folder um in the files you know, is, is I'd like to asterisk it. Like if this was the file name, I would just go here and I'd put a little asterisk in front of it. 
So now it's like at the top of the files and I can see you got a bounce, a reference bounce. I'll pull everything into the session and I'll have all the stems aligned at bar one, beat one. I got all the dry stems and I also have a reference mix. So I can hear like what you were trying to achieve with your reverbs, your delays, et cetera, that you just weren't pulling off or you know your over compression or your artifacts that are coming in through too much EQing, et cetera. And I can do my job and make it a record. So that's it. Hopefully this is really helpful for you. And uh, if you do like it, drop a like, drop a comment, tell me what DAW you're using, how you make stems. This is the quickest possible way to make stems in Logic and it works really, really well. And another thing I would always do is just double check the stems. So once they're all bounced and they're in the folder on your finder, just grab all those stems, grab all these, say these were the stems, grab them, pull them into a new session and make sure everything plays back correctly. And that's all you got. That's all the time I got. So drop a like, drop a comment, show some love, share this with your friends that need help stemming in Logic. And I'll make some more videos to stem in Pro Tools, uh, stemming in FL Studio. Uh, we use all those. And um, I mean, I, I could show you how to stem in Ableton. I could show you how to stem in all DAWs, but stemming is very, very important if you're gonna get a, a record mixed and mastered. Thanks for tuning in. Radium Media, Bradley Denniston, peace out.